There, there's an interesting aspect on soot because um, we published a paper suggesting that C60 or the mechanism that produces C60 might be involved in soot production. Now, <clears throat> when we published that about 1987, we got a lot of criticism that we didn't know anything about soot. Because it's an established field, right? It was an established field for 50, 100 years. Yeah. And uh, we were producing these round particles and I was particularly taken by this. I mean, I didn't go to soot conferences, but I did mention it as part of my um, p uh, presentations on C60. It was a small part, usually, but they picked up on that and uh, criticised us, and I got quite a bit of criticism. But my point was the following. Um, if they were correct, how come if the mechanism of soot formation was correct, how is it that they didn't pick up C60? Um, and in fact, I went to see um, Holman's group in Darmstadt, and he had a strong piece of C60 in his soot production uh, mass spectrometer. I said, that's C60. And I don't think he believed me, no. because a postdoc uh, of his Silke Luffler when the Kretschmer Huffman paper came out, emailed me and said, Well, you were right after all. Oh, so you were right after all. So they didn't believe me. Anyway. And the, especially with the peak, and they had the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So what did they think it was? I don't know. I think uh, that was a problem. Anyway, I, the point that I'm making is that it may not be the only mechanism that we suggested. It may not be the right one. But certainly, if C6 is forming, and there's a soot forming out of which you can extract C60, then it's clear that the combustion mechanisms that were uh, thought of up to that moment, up to 1990, were, had something missing. That's all I'm, I would say about it. Uh, so uh, they should have, they could have, detected C60 in the 1960s. So going back to Michael Faraday with his chemistry history of a candle, when he, his whole lecture was about yeah, yeah. the candle and he sucked out the soot, yeah. do you think Faraday was making Absolutely. <laughs> you see, in a normal flame, the soot goes through the flame oxygen boundary. By convection? Uh, well, it just comes out yeah. and gets, uh, depending on the temperature and how much oxygen in, say, a Bunsen burner flame mm -hmm. you've got, then uh, you, you lose it a lot of the soot, but you lose all the C60 because it's a small molecule, mm -hmm. it's a molecule, mm -hmm. but the soot just gets a bit of the outside burnt off, yeah. it's a microscopic particle, yeah, yeah. so you can see the soot, and the point is that C60 never builds up, yeah. I mean you can't, it's in the soot, it doesn't uh, aggregate together like mineral soot, and that, I mean, if, it's always if, finely divided in the soot particles, so yes, it, so it, burns it, it very won't readily. come out by itself, you can't sort of heat the source and C60 aggregate. I don't think so anyway. It, it, Not so easily. It, no. would, it would sublime out, yeah. but there's almost nothing there because the soot um, from a candle flame has lost any C60 yeah. that might yeah. have been formed. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now, in the star. Because if anyone would have spotted it, Faraday would, right? Well, I think he would. But it's uh, a big molecule. It's interesting. Yeah, no, but. Which just shows you what else is miss is You know, as you get up, between the region of really big things and small things, molecules and large particles, there's a whole area there, probably. Well, that that part, but probably not special ones. No. And fullerenes, yes, because you can, we can see fullerenes up to a thousand, but only C60 comes up. C28 yeah. comes up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we have, it's, it's not a stable C60. No, no. But it looks like it's a gateway to the larger ones. Yeah. Mm. So there you go. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, as a friend of mine said, well, you think it's interesting. <laughs>